So let's say that I wanted to try this new library called Assembler CSS. It looks pretty interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new tab here. Just type in github.dev. And what I want to do is start a new code swing. And here I'll do an HTML, CSS, and JavaScript template. All right, so I want to see the two web pages side by side. So if you're on a Mac, you're going to like this tip. I'm going to get out of full screen mode here. And I'm going to split these different tabs into two windows. Then I can hover over this little button right here and then tile this window to the right of the screen. I'm going to show them side by side like this. And then I'll just click on this one. This is max split view. So let's go ahead and change this layout here. I'm going to pull up the command palette and then choose change layout. And I'm going to split this at the bottom. This will put all of these sort of code tabs here at the bottom. I don't need the script tag. And that gives me a lot more real estate to see what I'm doing. So let's take a look at the documentation to see what we need to do here. To install this, I'm going to need this script call right here. So I'm going to copy this from this window, go into my code swing, and choose Add Library. This is going to be added as a script reference. And now I can take a look at the core concept section here. This library lets you take something that you would add into a style tag inside an element and express it in a different way. So you can see here that we're doing exactly the same thing with an X style attribute instead. Let's go ahead and copy this code and just put it in where our HTML would go. You can see this square appear here. This might work better if our style section is at the bottom here. So let's just move that to the bottom. That's not too impressive, but they have these additional virtual properties that are written in the same way as CSS classes and Bootstrap and Tailwind CSS. So all that code right there, you can write by simply using something like this and you get the same results. So the interesting thing is that you can also add CSS variables into your code. And to do that, you just create a root variable just like you would with a regular style sheet. So let's go ahead and add this primary color right here. And then you can use that as a variable in your content. So we can replace this background color here with our CSS variable. And the shortcut for that is the at sign and then the name of the variable. Now that's a little bit more useful. One of the real powers of this framework is that you can combine these variables with all the built-in virtual properties. You can see that it has most of the properties that you would find in a normal CSS framework. There's also a set of preset values that you can use in your code. These are really custom variables. The nice thing is that it assumes that you're going to be changing these. Next up will be the concept of states. So just like Tailwind allows you to define different states for your properties, you can do that by adding a period into your styles. Let's say, for example, that we wanted to change the background color whenever somebody hovered over our button. Next up is the concept of scopes. And this is how you would get to something like a pseudo class selector in CSS. To use them, you use the exclamation symbol. Next up would be media queries. These are handled by using the pipe character. Looks like I can't get quite to the Excel breakpoint at the screen size. Of course, it's super nice that you can convert all of your code into what's called a mixin. It's not pretty, but we can save what we've done so far into a mixin. What I'll do is I'll copy all this out. To use a mixin, you use a caret. It's above the six. I'm just going to call this box. And then in our root, we'll create a variable called box and then include the word mixin in here. Then in quotations, I'm just going to paste everything that I did and I'll get rid of the carriage returns. And it looks like we can use the reserved word box. So we'll change that to boxes to make this work. 